Hey everybody, I'm Chris Floyd, and today I'm going to be giving a lecture on the most riveting subject I could think of, taxes. Um, I chose to learn more about taxes because I feel that it's the most intimidating aspect of being an entrepreneur, and also on account of the fact that I'm not a very large man or very good at defending myself at all, and so I don't think I would do very well in prison. So I decided to familiarize myself with the tax situation so I can avoid all that. Uh, and for this topic, I looked at taxes for buying and selling cryptocurrency, um, as well as other tax situations that may be applicable to entrepreneurs. So the first thing I looked at is which tax situation is right for me. And um, for me, it really comes down to two options. You have sole proprietorship, which is um, just ordinary self-employed income, and uh, or an LLC, which is a limited liability company. Uh, an LLC makes more sense if uh, you're providing uh, a service or selling goods, and for the most part, I wouldn't be. Uh, but it could be beneficial in the case of if you were selling, uh, buying and selling cryptocurrency um, as a full-time job, uh, you may want to look into forming an LLC. Um, but the best situation for everybody uh, kind of depends on what they've got going on. In my case, I think a sole propri proprietorship would be okay. Uh, the next question that I needed to find out is, is there just a form or something? And it turns out there is. Uh, tax form 1040. Uh, when you fill out your income tax on an annual basis, you file what is called an income tax or a tax form 1040. It's a couple page form and that is, uh, it's a summary of all income tolls tax and credits that you're claiming on your tax return to show either a balance due or a refund for taxes for that year. After that, you have the next applicable uh, form, which is tax form 1040C, which is for uh, helps you file for self-employed income from uh, a trade or business. LLCs, independent contractors, and sole proprietors use this form to show income and um, expenses as well as to show profit from the businesses. Finally, you have tax form 1040D, which is for capital gains and losses. Uh, a good way to think about this is uh, Schedule C, 1040 Schedule C is the money you earn with the sweat off your back and uh, Schedule 1040D is uh, money that your money makes for you. So uh, if you were filling out the physical forms, you would fill out the 1040 or the right, you would fill out the 1040 and then attach the 1040C and 1040D behind it. Um, also, you would have wages such as W 2 wages, retirement income, interest income, and all other kinds of income that would go on the form 1040 and combine to show what taxable income you have and what taxes you owe on that income. Easy enough. So, what constitutes a taxable event in cryptocurrency? Turns out, anytime you sell cryptocurrency for a gain or a loss, a taxable event occurs. Um, so, at the end of the year, uh, the crypto gains or losses should be totaled and entered on the tax return, usually on a, schedule, on a form Schedule D for capital gains and losses. Uh, if you hold um, cryptocurrency longer or property longer than a year, it's considered a long-term gain or loss. But if you sell it before you've had it for a year, it's considered a short-term uh, gain or loss. It's also worth noting with cryptocurrencies, uh, even whenever it's used as a proper currency, um, i.e. it's exchanged for goods or services, it's still considered a, it's still considered property under the tax code. So basically, when you sell anything, the government wants their cut. Uh, how often should you pay taxes? Uh, the best approach is to pay quarterly to avoid uh, payment penalties, meaning that you knew you would owe taxes at the end of the year, but decided to pay but decide not to pay until filing during the next calendar year. Um, so quarterly is the best approach. Pretty much any time you make money, you can uh, you can go online and pay it. It's not that hard once you figure it out, it seems like. But they're due um, April 15th every year. 
death and taxes. Can't avoid them. Uh, if you're like me, you don't like paperwork. You don't. You want to outsource any kind of mathematics. Um, and it turns out there's an entire industry behind it. So there's tax software. Um, and also there's wonderful people such as Samantha Dent at uh, Accounting Plus who helped me get all my ducks in a row for this, get all my information straight. Uh, also, there's places like H&R Block, Jackson Hewitt. Uh, places like that can make it a little less scary and help you get a plan on it. Also, online, there's software such as TurboTax and QuickBooks. Uh, for cryptocurrency, I use a program called uh, Acquainting, which auto tracks automatically tracks all of my transactions across several currencies and wallets or several exchanges and wallets. Uh, it also tracks my portfolio for me. And, I mean, I highly recommend it if you're into the cryptocurrency investing thing. Uh, finally, can we go over deductions? Yes, we can. So, in general, on your tax return, everybody gets to deduct a standard deduction for being single, married, or uh, a head of household. And then you can claim credits for things such as uh, having a dependent, uh, daycare costs, uh, capital losses. Capital losses apply to me, uh, you can write off uh, $3,000 in losses each year, and those losses carry over to future years. So, for example, if you had $6,000 in capital losses in 2020, but you didn't have any in 2021, um, after you deduct the $3,000 for 2000 in 2020, you can use the remaining $3,000 that you lost in 2020 and deduct it in 2021, right? So, <laughs> other uh, applicable um, deductions include uh, tuition. If you're paying tuition or education and working towards a degree, you can deduct the uh, tuition costs, and you can also deduct student loan interest. If you're a teacher, you can deduct $250 a year towards teaching supplies, um, and also, there's a lot of other uh, credits and deductions available. It just depends on if they apply to you as an individual or not. Uh, of course, COVID has made it so there's a lot of uh, temporary tax breaks for business owners uh, this year, such as payroll credits and uh, other breaks. Other tricks. Uh, hold your short-term gains until they become long-term gains. Uh, you could do that. That that would be one way of reducing your taxable income. Uh, you could also do a self-directed IRA. You can put cryptocurrencies into an IRA, which I didn't really look too deep into, but um, it seemed doable at first glance. Uh, you can gift assets to family for up up to fifteen thousand dollars a year, and you or you can give it to charity. Um, I think during the GameStop thing earlier this year there was a guy who gave a, something like a hundred PlayStation 5s to a children's hospital and use it as a tax deduction so I mean if you don't want to pay for fixing potholes you can pay for PlayStations I guess uh, the key takeaways here um, taxes really they're misunderstood they're not as hard as they seem once you get to know them once you get familiar uh, that's kind of like everything in life. And, um, you know, don't get behind on them. It's best to pay quarterly if you can um, and figure out which situation is right for you. It varies, but the most common tax situation for entrepreneurs is either a sole proprietorship or, as it's known in the streets, a sole P or an LLC. And my sources for this were the IRS website, which, again, is once you dive in, is really pretty straightforward. Once you get the rhythm of it, I guess. Uh, and then Kiplinger.com and Samantha Dent, who is a tax advisor at uh, Accounting Plus.